I feel like every single job I learn something on because every job you make a mistake and you're like, oh, let's check that out next time. Or let's, you know, oh, let's not get those drives. Those drives are slow. Like, <laughs> or whatever the, you know, whatever the thing may be. Just like taking each thing and being like, it's okay to not be perfect if the end result is the client is happy with the images. Welcome to the She Clicks Women in Photography podcast. I'm Angela Nicholson and I'm the founder of She Clicks, which is a community for female photographers. In these podcasts, I talk with women in the photographic industry to hear about their experiences, what drives them, and how they got to where they are now. In this episode, I'm speaking with Kate T. Parker, a mother, wife, Ironman, professional photographer, and New York Times bestselling author. Her strong is the new pretty book led to collaborations with major brands and inspired philanthropic projects. Hi, Kate. Thank you so much for joining me today on the She Clicks Women in Photography podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, that's lovely. Could we start right back at the beginning and you could tell us a little bit about how you got started in photography? Did you always know it was going to be your career? No, it's so funny. I originally worked as a video editor and then I moved over to a producer for an ad agency producing commercials. And then um, I had my first daughter and I was home with her and really was looking for a creative outlet. Like I loved being home with her, but I was also like I needed something for myself. And I was really looking for a an outlet, like a creative outlet. And I was used to making things compelling on a screen. And so I was like, oh, I think I would really love to start my own photography business and really jumped in headfirst without enough training without, you know, without any idea what that looked like. But I would just take pictures. And then I had my next starter and I was just taking pictures all of the time. Like I was lying on the floor taking pictures of them trying to figure out, you know, how do I shoot this in focus and how do I get this to blur and how do I edit? And like every little thing, I would like try to learn one thing at a time and master that and then move on. And then I started shooting families probably way too soon before I was like skilled or savvy enough to know what I was doing. But I was like so excited about it. And so that's how I got started. So you understood the basics of photography from your videography days. Anyway, you knew what the camera controls did. It was just switching from shooting video to shooting stills. Not really, because I didn't shoot. I was just editing and producing. So I wasn't even really behind the camera. Uh, oh, I just knew what looked good in the, in the editing portion of the, you know, I was like, I know what, I know how to compose a shot. I know what the end shot should look like, but getting there was the thing I needed to learn. Got you. Yeah. You know what good exposure should look like, but you didn't necessarily know how to achieve it and, you know, working through how to get the right depth of field and all that sort of stuff you had to teach yourself. hundred percent. Exactly. That's what it was. Like I knew what I wanted the photos to look like. I didn't always know how to get there. So it was a lot of, you know, trial and error. Mm -hmm. So how long was it between you sort of first thinking that you wanted to do something creative, picking up a camera and actually starting to get clients? I would say I remember um, I, I remember I borrowed my sister-in-law's camera on a vacation and she had a she had a nicer camera than I did. And I didn't realize how quickly it could shoot. And with kids, you know, you need that because they're moving around or they're in and out of focus. And her, I mean, her camera was on uh, on auto. And then I was like, gosh, this photo really, it really captured my youngest daughter's just like personality. And I was like, I want to buy a camera. I, I'm buying a camera. And then I would say probably a year from that when I started like taking clients. And I, I started really small. I, I really just I would do like free sessions at first, trying to get practice. And and, and I also, I remember being like, it, it really started for me because I, I, we had had photos done of our family and the ones that I loved, the ones that I really like, were the ones that were not posed and that were more the candids. And so I was like, I really want the photography I do to feel as authentic as possible. I'll do the pose family pictures because everybody wants that, but that is not what I'm going to put out to the world as what this is my photography. Like I, you know, obviously everybody wants that, but what I want to put out there was the ones where the kids were screaming 
or like, you know, like everybody's laughing or or, or mid run or, or, you know, like any of the ones that actually showed personality and life or the one is what I really wanted to shoot. What is it, would you say, about lifestyle and portrait photography that really draws you? I love helping to tell a story. I like capturing those moments. And for me, it's, you know, it started really small with my girls, like trying. I didn't see a lot of portraits of young girls where they were emotional or angry or or really honestly just not smiling and in, in, in a perfectly dressed outfit with their hair curled looking at the camera. That's really what I wanted to put out there. Um, and so I was trying to capture that kind of image. Yeah. And you shoot quite a bit of sport photography or kind of almost like sport portraits, if that's the, the, if that's the right description. What, what drew you to that? Right. That's, I mean, I think that's a really good description because I would not consider myself a sports photographer, like, you know, shooting stuff on the field or, but I, yeah, I have done a bunch of, of sport p- photography for teams um, or, you know, professional teams, or also I, I have a, I have a book that I did about girls soccer called Play Like a Girl. And for me, I, I was, I've been an athlete my whole life and I really love the, like, like, like the truth and the honesty and the emotions and the excitement that come with sports. And I love showing that, especially in young girls and women. So I, I really, I, I got so much from my whole life out of sports and I like to try to help celebrate that. Yeah, because your pictures of sports people aren't, they're not sort of head and shoulder shots. It's definitely them in some way involved in the sport or showing some aspect. But like you say, it's not actually halfway through the match. There's a different element to it. So it looks active. Yeah, I like the sidelines. I like the someone on the bench or right after the game or, um, you know, the, you, the, the talking to the coach or, you know, the getting ready. I really like the, um, I feel like other people can capture the game better than I can. And I like those those sort of unguarded moments leading up to and then after after the matches is where I think I, I, I don't know, it's what I'm drawn to. Yeah. I mean, I used to play football or soccer, you'd call it. Okay. And I think there's a, there's a real intensity, isn't there, to, a, to the team sport and that connection that you get between your teammates. And I feel that comes through in your images. Is that something that you work out or do you think it just comes naturally because they are so connected? Oh, I think for sure. I think also, I think because I grew up, you know, I played soccer my whole life. I played in college and the, I like the, my very favorite thing is that relationship with my teammates. And so I think I look for that. And honestly, it's funny when I'm, when I'm shooting, I'm like, uh, I'm like jealous. I'm like, oh, I remember this feeling and I remember this relationship and like the inside jokes that you have with your teammates and the, how they look out for you and they pick you up and, um, I so appreciate it when I had it. And so I like to capture that because I think it's it's a relationship like kind of unlike any that you have outside of sport because it's like it's like a sister almost like you go through like you go through pain, you go through broken bones, you go through wins and losses and, you know, all ups and downs. And so I think it's such a unique and special relationship that I really love trying to capture that. Yeah, and there's a very special moment, I think, sometimes when you, you're you on a pitch playing and you know where someone is, but you haven't seen them. You just know where they're going to be. So you pass the ball and they get it and then they score. I think it's, you know, it's such a magical feeling. <laughs> I love it so much. I remember I one of my, my best friend, actually, I played college soccer with her. We still live in the same neighborhood and um, our kids are the same age. And so we're very close. And we went back for like a reunion game maybe like 10 years ago and um, she and I were not goal scorers necessarily, and we were you know, playing in this game. We're in our thirties, and I somebody crossed the ball. I let I did sort of like I sort of like opened my legs just to let it go through, which is not a I'm not that skilled of a player. I like dummied, went through my legs. She scored a goal, and it still we still talk about it to this day. Like we're and she scored a goal on a girl who played professionally. Like she was a professional goalie. She played in the um, professional leagues and she's just like that's and she literally just walked off the field after that she was just like and, and I knew she was there there was no conversation about it you know she knew that that's her job and it's so funny we're we're like in our late 40s now and we're still like remember remember when we did that <laughs> fantastic 
Now, you've actually photographed the U.S. women's soccer team, haven't you? What was that like? Oh, my gosh. It was awesome. It was such a cool opportunity. I was part of a collective of women that were tasked to come up with the sort of the look and the feel of what the World Cup branding and, and photography would be. And so as part of that, um, I had a chance to shoot the women's national team two times, which was amazing. And honestly, it was like a dream come true. You know, you have very quick time with them, but just seeing, you know, how they interact with each other, how it's like, you know, it's the same, even though they're the best in the world, it's the same. They're still teammates and they still joke around and they, you know, mess around with each other and be like, oh, so-and-so was in here. Did you do this? You know, they're like laugh about each other, which is, it's really nice to see. Oh, it sounds like great fun, but it must've been quite a lot of pressure as well. Yeah, it was because you literally, they're, they're like, you have a minute with Alex Morgan or or whoever. And, um, but thankfully, like we use this, the same setup on all of them. It's kind of like a, like you get your thing down and then you try to pull as much of personality out as you can, try to make people feel comfortable, have music on. I think some of the players, it's probably not their favorite thing. Like, you know, getting, going through five different stations of media day and how many times have they done it? So trying to just be like aware that maybe this is not their favorite thing and be like, listen, I promise you, we're going to get you out of here as quickly as we can. And um, not nitpick as much as maybe, you know, like, okay, well, we're, we're going to move. Yeah. We'll make this fun. And then some of the players were like, yeah, this is my favorite station. I was like, oh, that's that's victory. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Yeah. But I guess like you said, they, they've, they've done it a few times. It's not their first shoot. So they're kind of experienced, but they also know what they don't like. Obviously, you want them to look happy and like they were having fun and enjoying themselves. So that, were they all willing to go along with that? Yeah, for sure. Like, because I, I would try to get a range of emotion. I wanted like, you know, straight to the camera, like tough. And and then also like we we had, it's funny, we had like the corniest jokes um, on like our iPhone that we would just tell them just to get a laugh out of them. Um, just to get, you know, get a real smile. And so we would, we have like little tricks that, um, you know, like, because even if it's a terrible joke, the laugh after is real. Like, because they're like, oh my gosh, it's so bad, you know? <laughs> Oh, that's a good idea. So you just look something up on, on the phone and say, right, I'm going to read you a joke. Yeah. <laughs> good idea. Yeah. I feel like this is a terrible joke. Yeah. We just want a real laugh after this, you know. Or honestly, if like another one of the teammates was hanging around, I was like, come in here. Can you just make her laugh? And then they would, you know, a lot of times. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we, we've covered quite a lot of ground because we've gone from you just picking up camera to suddenly you're shooting the U.S. national soccer team. <laughs> there was a... A stage in between. So, you know, how did you first get, start to get clients? So I um, would, I was just like put stuff on, I use social media and I um, would, um, you know, just started with families and then I started doing a few weddings. And then I, because of my background, I had friends that worked in advertising and I, I remember a Somebody that I knew that was a creative director said, hey, I really like the family portraits and the things that you're doing and the lifestyle stuff that you're shooting. Do you think you could do that potentially for um, a ho like it was for um, a hotel chain? And I was like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like I was so nervous. And then um, like because I, I had shot all all of that work by myself. I wasn't working with lighting. I wasn't working with models. I wasn't working with, you know, like a digitech or clothing hair and makeup and but I was just like I knew what photo shoots looked like because I had been on them before I'd help organize them for um when I was in the advertising world but um so I that was my first big commercial job um and I like literally on the way into the job I threw up I was so nervous I was so scared thankfully like the creative director could not have been kinder and just was like I think he sensed that I was scared and he knew that this was sort of a new thing for me and he was like I just want you to to have time to do the things that you're good at and I was like okay a family in a hotel room I can 100% do this like this is this should be fun and so it was a nerve-wracking experience but I was really happy I got some great photos and then my commercial photography business started to grow more because I honestly wanted to push more into that and initially solely because I was I had young kids and I was didn't want to work on the weekends anymore 
I was like, I wanted to, I wanted the weekends for family and I wanted to work more weekdays, like a normal job. And it's funny because what commercial photography turned into is like anything but a normal job. But initially that's how it started, you know, for me, like, oh, I was, I was like, oh, I, I can sort of use my background in the agency world and then and try to be creative um, within the parameters of whatever that campaign might be, which I really love. And I still do that a lot to this day. I would say like 70 percent of the work I do is is um, commercial photography campaigns and the like 30 percent would be personal work, like including books and stuff like that. So with the commercial work, do you pitch to clients ideas or is it primarily them coming to you with their idea and wanting to know how you would deliver it? Generally, it's more of the latter. I have um, an agent that they usually go to them first and usually you're triple bidding it. So there's usually three photographers bidding. So you come up with a treatment usually saying, this is how I think I would tackle the job. This is our estimate. Have some creative calls and then it's either awarded to you or not awarded to you. So that, I mean, I find that that's a hard part of the job for me that because I don't know it just you feel you feel badly when you don't get them and you're like why I don't understand I thought I would be perfect or sometimes I'm like no I'm glad somebody else would do a better job at this than me but some of them I'm like this is made for me I, don't, I can't believe I can't believe I didn't get it yeah but yeah usually I would say usually they come with their ideas and then within their creative brief or I, that's when I hope to sort of imbue some of like what my thoughts and ideas are to make it feel I always try to make commercial stuff feel as real as possible and so like trying to say I think if we shot it this way or maybe maybe we shouldn't use talent maybe we should try to find real people like just trying to help creatively lead the client to get the best images yeah and presumably they've come to you they're familiar with your work so they're kind of looking in that area they want your style so it's just yeah, just knowing how you would approach it. What would you say were the biggest challenges that you faced in your, perhaps your early part of your career? And do you think they've changed now or are the challenges still the same? I would say, honestly, like the the beginning part of my career, struggling a lot with like the, I guess, like imposter syndrome. Like I was seeing, I walked into that shoot and I hadn't been I hadn't been a photographer that had been an assistant for another photographer I had really just been shooting my own stuff for so long and not knowing necessarily how a commercial set was run or what my role on that was and trying to figure out like okay you're the you're the boss and 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 owning that role and knowing that um that maybe I don't know exactly the exactly like the name of all the lights that need to go up for the lighting person to do but knowing accepting that and just saying I can explain to them what kind of light I want and where I want it to hit and what I want it to feel like and being okay with not knowing parts of it but knowing that the end result and the vision that I had was enough and not feeling like apologetic about that. And also knowing to hire people that you trust and to and to sort of fight to get the people that you work well with and that are kind. I really, really want kind people on set and people that I can trust. I struggle less with that these days, but it took a while to be like, to know that that's that's okay and like that I feel like every single job I learn something on because every job you make a mistake and you're like oh let's check that out next time or let's you know so, oh let's not get those drives those drives are slow like <laughs> or whatever the you know whatever the thing may be just like taking each thing and being like it's okay to not be perfect if the end result is the client is happy with the images and just like taking the whatever the business side of it and learning those things from it to make sure that whatever that is, you don't make that mistake next time. I think you make a good point that you don't have to know absolutely everything. There is a tendency as photographers to feel like you should know absolutely everything about photography and cameras and lighting and everything. But if you're a, say if you are a sports photographer and you're always shooting outside in natural light, why would you know how to set up a studio? Right. You know, it's, it's a very different skill set. So, you know, cut yourself some slack. You know how to compose a picture. You know how to get things in focus. But you're going to have to learn the studio side if you want to move inside. 
Yes. And I think women also struggle more with that than than men. There's these like studies of like, you know, um, women will only apply to jobs that they meet every single possible criteria. They wouldn't even apply to it. But a man would just be like, you know, I think I'll fit in. And like, I feel like the same is like, you don't have to be an expert in every single area, but you, you can hire those people and they can tell you. So I, I think being okay with that is was a huge learning curve for me. Because I remember that first shoot, I was like, I don't know how to set up the lights. I don't know how to do that. And like, my producer was like, you don't have to. You just tell them where to. And I'm like, okay, good. Okay, thank you. Yes, it's nice to have that reassurance from someone sometimes. Yeah, exactly. So your first book, Strong is the New Pretty, that had a huge impact. And I know lots of women who bought it for their daughters or other girls in their family because they felt it was su such an important message. How did that project come about? How did you start it? So that project started, honestly, like the images that I had been shooting for years and years of my girls and their friends, um, just solely to try to get better as a photographer. And then I, I had been asked to be part of a gallery show here in Atlanta where I live and had to pull like the 20 strongest images from the um, my archive. And so I noticed like the 20 images were generally like the ones where the girls were not smiling, where they were dirty, they were muddy, they were running around, they had broken legs, they were um, crying. Like they were not smiling at the camera looking perfectly done up. And so those 20 images were in the gallery and I was, I was so excited for this show and um, it was such a big deal. A bunch of my soccer teammates from college all came in to like celebrate this opening of the show and not one single image at the show sold. And I was like, they, they literally all, are all hanging in my great room. So I was like, do I sell my camera? Do I quit photography? Like I'm, I'm so, I felt like such a failure. And after like mourning it for like a couple days, I was just like, you know what? Maybe somebody doesn't want to hang it in their home, but I really do think the message behind this is important and I didn't want to give up on it. I had worked hard on it. I really believed that the message was was important. And so I was like, well, I did so much work pulling out these images. Um, I'm going to send these to a, a few blogs I follow and nobody responded. And then every single day for like two weeks, I just would find other parenting blogs or or even like I didn't even care I was like I'll send it to CNN I'll send it to the New York Times I didn't care if anybody said no or responded because it literally meant I was in the same place as I was and then one blog was like oh this is great we'll run this and from there all of these other blogs picked it up and then CNN picked it up and then the Today Show and and then somebody reached out and said hey would you be interested in doing a book of these images and I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I would so much rather have a book because then you can give it to your daughter or your friend or your coworker. But at that point, the the images were really only of my girls and their friends because it was a, you know, it was a small personal project. So I took a whole other year to shoot, to just to have more diversity in there of strength of what, where the girls live, what the girls look like. Um, so it, we, the book Strong as You Pretty from that point took another year to make. And I was really thankful for that time to include all kinds of girls and all kinds of strength. And how did you find the subjects for the book? So the ones that I'd already shot were just, you know, local people that we knew. And then the ones, as I expanded the project, I would try to actually like include if I was traveling somewhere for a commercial project, you know, I would just say I would put calls out on social media. Like, you know, if I was going to Los Angeles, I would I'm like, OK, let's maybe we can get some surfers or skaters, you know, whatever sort of was like what that area might have. And then I so I use social media. I also used just to make sure that, you know, somebody's mom didn't need to follow me on social media to be included in the book. I would reach out to organizations, you know, the Girl Scouts or Girls on the Run or Girls Inc. or Boys and Girls Clubs, um, places like that to try and get as much diversity in strength as I possibly could. Did you find that people were generally enthusiastic about getting involved? Yeah. Yeah. I, and also, yeah, I forgot to mention a lot of people just emailed me with their stories and said, you know, this is my daughter or this is me. I'd love for you to come shoot this. But yeah, it was the feedback was really amazing. And I it's honestly, it's one of my favorite things about making books is like I will make a list of like 
all of sort of activities or strengths that I'd like to capture. But then people send me things I would never think of. And they're like so much better than, you know, anything that I could come up with. So I feel like it's like you kind of crowdfund these amazing stories that from my experience, I would have never known about. What I find amazing about the book, I mean, I love the photographs, but then they'll put a quote from the, the, the subject that you photograph from their age and you read it, you think they're 12 years old and they've said something as insightful as that, you know, just about how they feel or why they play a sport or, you know, about being friends or something. And it's it's really incredible. Yeah, I am so inspired. And that's one of the main things is like when I shoot the books or I talk to the girls, that it's just like I come away with so much hope and I feel like so much discussion of our younger generation is like, oh, it's apathy or they're just so much social media. And I'm like, I these girls are are so smart and insightful and have so many wonderful ideas and are doing so many amazing things that it definitely makes me feel like we'll, 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 we're going to be okay. Yes. Now that, that book had such an impact. Do you feel under pressure to do anything else you know, this as impactful. Do you feel like you've really got to deliver? Oh my gosh, yeah. I It's so funny. I I have a new book coming out in a couple of weeks. I, it's funny though. It's always been the same feeling from the start. Every, like this is my fifth book coming out. I absolutely hate when they come out so much. I love, love making them. Oh really? Yes. I love making them, but I. it's like you never know how things are doing are people reacting it to it well do they respond do they understand and i i just would rather like i don't it's funny somebody's like oh you don't like doing you don't like talking about the books i go no i love talking about the books it's just what what are other people saying it's it's such a weird feeling i i don't love when they come out yeah. but i i really like sharing them i wish i could just put it out there and do and then not ever know how things do and just assume that it's okay. <laughs> Is it a bit like posting something on Instagram and you don't know whether it's going to get one like or a hundred likes? And you know, yeah, exactly. And you're like, I, I think it's really good. And you're like, is nobody seeing it? I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. It's kind of a, you just feel very exposed, I guess. Yeah. Yes, I think that's it, isn't it? Because you've poured so much effort into it. And I think that's, that's the whole thing actually with photography critiques people get very nervous because you put so much thought and effort and there's so much sort of personal interpretation into a single picture if somebody doesn't understand it or they just look at it and think no I don't really like that it's really hard to deal with it isn't it yeah it's tough it's tough to like have a have a sort of a you know like just the shell to be like I believe in this I think it's great I don't care if anybody else responds to it because you're like I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. You know, it's I um but I'm I do like the at the end of the day I really do believe in these stories and think that they're important to share. Yeah. So I try to remind myself of that right, regardless of like how things are doing or tracking or you know, it's ultimately I I really am thankful for the opportunity. But yeah, like I said, like to crawl under a rock for a couple of weeks while 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 it's all coming out. <laughs> So you're building up to that now because your book's coming out, you say, in a couple of weeks, Force of Nature. Yeah. What can you tell us about the book? So Force of Nature is, the subtitle is a celebration of girls and women raising their voices. And it, uh, like all my books, it's basically, it's a similar structure. It's a, a, it's a photograph of a girl and then her quote. Um, but this one is focused on, um, it's a similar feel to Strong's New Pretty, but it's focused on girls and women who have used, how they use their voices, how they find their voices, how they sustain their voices and how they're amplifying their voices so people that are changing the world or their worlds um through their you know like really just speaking up and saying something okay sounds incredible i look forward to seeing it oh thank you yeah i have a copy right here which is my my only copy <laughs> fantastic oh, i look forward to seeing it so i think it's a really good time to go to six from she clicks so i have 10 questions from she clicks members and i'm going to ask you to answer six of them please by picking numbers from one to 10. So if you'd like to pick your first number. Sure, how about six? Number six. Okay, okay, this is an interesting one. What is your process for capturing such emotion and stories in your photographs? Did you find that it comes naturally to you or did you have to study and practice to obtain such skill? That question is from Jane. I think, honestly, I don't feel like I am 
the great, uh, like that great of a photographer. I think I'm a very good color, like a good editor of figuring out those images that portray the most emotion and also knowing that knowing when it's coming and having my camera ready. So like setting things up like, you know, okay, like this say we're, you know, like I remember shooting something right here with my youngest daughter. Um, We're playing Yahtzee and uh, and she's about to get Yahtzee. And I don't know if she's going to roll a Yahtzee or not, but I'm like, I'm here with the camera watching you roll and I'm shooting at high speed shutter and I capture that moment the second she rolls Yahtzee. And it's just a lot of like trying to trying to just to position yourself and to shoot and then knowing what emotion is coming. And then also pulling those images when you're editing of the ones that are like that exact second of of what's happening. And yeah, I think for me, it's really just that like the um, sort of preamble, knowing what you want, knowing what emotion you want and trying to figure out the best way to maximize the shot. Yeah. And I guess sort of focusing in on the opportunity, we mentioned photographing soccer you, and you're switching to Yahtzee. So you could say, oh, well, Yahtzee, it's not an exciting, active thing, but actually what's going to happen in that? There's going to be excitement when she gets the, the numbers she wants. Exactly. Yeah. And then being like, okay, we're focusing, have focus on her face and like just being aware of what is to come and setting yourself up for success in, in trying to capture. And it may not happen, but at least you were ready for it. Okay. So, uh, could I have a second number, please? Oh, um, can we do two? Number two. Okay. Uh, There are many women who, like you, are multifaceted creators. How do you balance all the aspects of who you are? That uh, question is from Shera. Oh, wow. That's, I mean, that's a hard one. I, yeah, I feel like, so, you know, I'm a, you know, mom, a photographer, author. I think for me, like, personally, the thing that helps me stay grounded and, sane is I had you know it's funny because the thing I carved out for myself when I had my daughters as my creative outlet was photography and then it became work so it was less of a stress release but then I I mean I've always been an athlete so now the thing that I I do is I run I run marathons and I train for marathons and uh, running really like carving out that time for myself to it makes me feel good it makes me feel healthy it helps me think it helps me be creative so I think like sort of demanding that time for myself has been really really helpful do you use teams to to help you so like you know do you have a social media team or somebody who handles social media for you and then somebody else who does the processing of your images anything like that so you can just concentrate on you know the things you want to do not really I have somebody that does editing for me when it's something that I can't do if it's like something I'm like above my pay grade Although now with Photoshop beta, it's hard to find a lot of stuff above, you know, that's, it's made it a lot easier. (laughs) But I, I generally do all my social media except for the lead up to when I release a book, I have somebody that helps sort of, cause I don't know how to do TikTok. And so she's been helping me do all that kind of stuff. But generally I do everything myself. My um, husband helps with like expenses and, and all of the um, financials for work, but everything else is me basically. Okay. Okay. All right. So your third number then, please. Oh, um, nine. Number nine. What do you believe distinguishes a memorable photograph from a forgettable one? That question's from Anne. That's a good one. I would say, Anne, for me, I think the thing that distinguishes a good photograph for, for, or something that you remember is just how does it make you feel? Do you have a reaction to it? Also, I love ones that I'm like, what is going on over there? Like there, you know, they has like little Easter eggs in there. Um, but generally I would say like, how does it make you feel? Does it, does it give you an emotion rather than just like, I don't know, is it just telling you something? Like I, I, as long as it, I love when it makes you feel something. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's about your response to it. Exactly. Okay. Could I have your fourth number then, please? Um, one. Oh, now this is an interesting one. Now, this person, Penny, she said that she's read lots of interviews with you and I think she's seen a few podcasts. And so she said it was going to be hard to come up with a question, but she wanted to ask you something. So she said, what question would you love to answer, but nobody ever asks you? Oh, wow. Yeah. 
what question does nobody like i guess like i don't know maybe what's my favorite thing to photograph the things i love to shoot are kids and dogs i love them love it because i think they're they're unpredictable they're they're like raw and they bring me so much joy so and it's funny i had a commercial shoot that i was shooting for dog pharmaceuticals and it was we had dogs and we had it was dog lifestyle and i was like this is my favorite thing to shoot i love this so much <laughs> there is dogs not you know i'm sitting here with my three golden retrievers all lying around and so i that would i would say that like if i love i love talking about dogs i love shooting dogs i love shooting kids of talking about kids. So combining all those things is what I would say would be my favorite thing. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. I have a dog and he's my favorite thing to photograph. Oh, what, what kind of dog do you have? A border terrier. Okay. So he's quite small, but very feisty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So your penultimate number then, please. Oh, shoot. I'm trying to remember what I did. I don't think I put 10 in yet. No, you haven't had number 10. Okay. How do you get your subjects into the right frame of mind for being photographed? And quite a few people ask that question. Oh, okay. I would say, like, I think your whole set, like the whole vibe on your set, when they walk in or you come to them, you don't have your camera up there, you talk to them like a human being. And just, I think also, um, especially for me, if it's a commercial set and they're not a professional model or actor, explaining what is happening um, seeing if they're okay. Do they need anything? This light is going to do this. This person, that's their job. Th you know, I'm going to be back here. If you have any issues or anything, just come talk to me. Oh, what's your favorite music? We're going to put that on our speaker. Like just making people feel like they have some agency, like they are comfortable and that their comfort is very important to you as a photographer, making sure that that because then they feel like they can trust you and they can be sad, happy, emotional, honest, whatever that thing is, I think treating, because it's very hard for us as, you know, if we're working, we're in this work mode, you, you're you like, okay, just let's just go, let's go, like, oh, we're behind, we're behind. But like taking the, those five minutes to make your subject comfortable is so huge. And it's hard sometimes because it's, you are running late or, or this isn't working and you're constantly putting up fires, but knowing that the paramount thing is making sure that you your subject is okay and that yeah I find that to be like taking that time really goes a long way and it's also just like the right thing to do as a human being well it's nice to find out a little bit about your subjects as well isn't it you know what makes them tick yeah photographers are curious people anyway you know and like knowing a little bit about somebody as a human being is is huge yeah yeah it's very important and, you know, you can't just say to someone, relax, look natural, because, you know, how do you do that? You need, you need to be, something else needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You need to help someone relax. You can't just tell them to relax. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That is your job to ensure that they feel relaxed. <laughs> so your last number then, please. Um, eight. Great. Oh, now I love this question. This is from Liz. Who is the first strong woman you remember? Oh, wow. Um, it's funny. The first person that popped up into my head was my, my first soccer coach ever, uh, Mrs. Jeans. She was the mom of one of my good friends. And she was frustrated that our town did not have a girls soccer team and made one for the girls. Great. And did not know a lot about soccer. She was like a dance instructor, but she was just like in the early, you know, in the 80s was like, my daughter wants to play soccer and I'm starting this team. And I just, I don't think that at the time I was like, was it anything but appreciative because I was like really wanted to play soccer. But now I look back and I was like, oh, that she's like a badass. That's awesome. Thanks, Mrs. Jeans. Like it really, you know, really changed um changed the course of my life for sure yeah you don't really think about it sometimes you know at the time it just sort of all happens but then you look back and when I I uh, saw this question from Liz the, the name that popped into my head was Martina Navratilova oh wow because you remember she was you know she changed how people train you know she was a really scientific uh she had a very scientific approach to training and I remember at the school I was at at the time, 
it was always felt it was almost like she was cheating a bit Mm -hmm. you know but now you look back and you think what an amazing athlete yeah i love that um yeah and it's one of it's funny speaking of her, Martina, um, we have Billie Jean King is in this book, Force of Nature book, and had the amazing opportunity to to hear a conversation and photograph a conversation between her and Gloria Steinem, which was like, oh, wow. I couldn't believe that I got to be there for that. But yeah, just thinking about how like women of that generation really paved the way for so many changes to be made and um, like literally changed the world because of them. Yeah, yeah, it made huge changes. Now they're sort of seen as as spokespeople as well, which is great. And they often have very insightful comments, I think. Exactly. Well, Kate, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been really wonderful hearing from you. And I wish you the very best of luck with your next book. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the time and love the questions. They're all more photography focused than some of the other stuff I'm doing, which I love. So I I felt at home. (laughs) that's great thanks very much bye 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 thanks for listening to this episode of the she clicks women in photography podcast i hope you enjoyed it you'll find links to kate's social media channels and website in the show notes i'll be back with another episode soon so please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform and tell all your friends and followers about it you'll also find she clicks on facebook twitter instagram and youtube if you search for she clicks net So until next time, enjoy your photography.